Let us pray. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. Thank you, God, for your presence in this place. And we pray, O oh God, that you will remain here with us as we dig into your word together. You remove me out of the way so you can, in fact, have your way. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We honor you. Lift you up and magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the title for today's message is a title that you're going to say, I already know that. God is a way maker. God is a way maker. A way maker is one who makes a way, a precursor, a pioneer, a pathfinder. As a matter of fact, when you dig into the background of the word, it it was someone who actually went to make sure that the road was paved that you could get through. That was a way maker when you look at the history of the word. We often say that God makes a way out of no way. And that is in fact true. But all throughout the word of God, we can see God, because of his love, mercy, and grace, making a way for his children. God has always made a way. From Genesis to Revelation, God is making a way. He made a way in the past, he's making a way in the present, and he's made a way for our future. When we couldn't even see our way, he made a way. When we didn't even know that we needed a way, he made a way. God makes a way for us in so many ways. But you know, there was a problem in the Garden of Eden with our Ancestry.com, Adam and Eve. They messed up. But the good thing about the Garden is it shows us that God gives us a choice. We are not robots. Because, you know, if we didn't have a choice, then we would be forced to love God and serve him. But God gave them choice. Choice is important. Whenever you can make a choice about something, don't waste it. But they had a choice and, and they made the wrong choice. And I know they're not by themselves because I made the wrong Choices. I don't want to talk about you right now. I'll get to you later, but, but I know they weren't by themselves. And I used to say, if I had all that garden eating around me, how could I make the wrong choice? I, I used to talk about the disciples. How can you be with Jesus and make the wrong choice and not believe? But there's something about the human nature, which is why God put in the book of Deuteronomy, I put before you life and death, but you lie. Why? Why did God, who knows us, who made us in his image, knows everything about us, have to say, I put before you life and death, choose life. There's a reason God had to say that, but God is a way maker. You know there is no way I can live without him. Oh, we used to sing a song, he keeps on making a way for me, even when I didn't deserve it. He keeps on making a way. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Of Jesus. Has God ever made a way for you? God is a way maker. Suppose we opened the church one Sunday and had a God is a way maker service. And all we did was stand up and testify about God making a way. And the thing about that is, if He doesn't make a way according to our will, He makes a way according to His will. Because sometimes the way he makes, we don't understand it, and we don't like it, but it's not left up to us. I had to learn that he, he, he's not a genie in a bottle. He, he doesn't do what we want. He does exactly what he promised. And then 
and he does it when he wants to, and how he wants to, and when he wants to, but he's still a way maker. Amen. Can nobody make a way for you like God? Because he sees the beginning and the end. He's Alpha and Omega. And God's going to allow me to use the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, 1 through 14, to show that he's always made a way. Now, when you look at the book of Hebrews, they say the author is unknown, but many scholars would say because of the way it's set up, it was written by Paul. But I'm not here to argue the authorship. I'm just glad that it's in the book. So the purpose was to present Christ as sufficient and superior to all the high priests that had come. And it was to present Jesus superior and sufficient to the Jewish Christians who may have been considering a return to Judaism because of their lack of understanding of biblical truths. And it's somewhat like us today. There are some people that just don't understand God. And, and they, they, they don't understand his ways because they don't give themselves time to understand it's a spiritual and not a natural so some of them would turn to Judaism because that's where their comfort was. You, you ever been invited to something new and your comfort was in the old? Yeah. And, and, and the new was actually better for you, but your comfort was in the old. And God requires that you and I sometimes come out of our comfort zone. Because the way that he makes is not to make us comfortable, it's to make us confident. It, it, it's to make us consistent in our relationship. It was written, you know, right, they said around before the destruction of the temple in, in, in Jerusalem in 70 A.D. because it talks about so much about the ceremonies and the sacrifices. And then it was during a time when, when the Jewish Christians were undergoing fierce persecution, both from the Jews and the Romans. See, when you change, those that you left might come after you. Anybody ever been in a gang? Okay, all right. If you change gangs to try to get out, <laughs> those that you used to hang with will come after you. As a matter of fact, you could be in a club and join another club or just lead a club, and all of a sudden, as Reverend John was saying, you find stuff on Facebook about you, and you'll find stuff people be talking about you. Cause just because you change. You never sign your life to these people, but just because you change, they, oh, Lord. That's what happened to the Jews. They, they, they were Jewish Christians, and the Jews that remained in Judaism and the Roman rule said, no, we, we, we don't like this because you're pulling power from us. Anytime you mess with a power source, and you know you didn't give them power, they just think they're powerful. Uh, they they, 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 they want to pull you back to where you were. But God is a way maker. I don't know anybody that said to me, God made a way for me, and I went back. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Because he, he, when he does it, he doeth all things well. And when you read the book of Hebrews, it focuses on the sufficiency and superiority of Christ. And it's one of the books of the Bible that shows that God has always been working. Because when Adam and Eve messed up in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3.15 says that he promised Christ then. Because God had a plan for you and a plan for I and a plan for this world before the foundation of the world. See, you always got to have a plan. Because sometimes my plan A does not work. And you need a plan B and sometimes you need a plan C. Somehow God in his foreknowledge, he knew that when he gave Adam and Eve a choice that they were going to mess up. But God said just because they messed up doesn't mean everything has to be messed up. See, God made a way a long time ago for you and I to come back to him, to be reconciled to him, for you and I to be here in this church, lifting up his name and magnifying him and glorifying him. So he made a way because sometimes stuff changes. There is the old, the new, and the you. That's our point for today, the old. Point number two, the new. Point number three and you. Number one, the old. Number two, the new. And number three and you, the believer. And that's what Romans, uh, Hebrews 10 is talking about. The, the whole book is powerful. 
But it's talking about the old system. Because of sin, God had to make a way. But what I like about God, you can't rush God. Because if I was up there, as soon as folks start messing up, I would have sent Jesus right away. But instead of sending Jesus in the flesh right away, what he did was he set up an old system of sacrificial giving. When you read the book of Leviticus, there's sin offerings, there's peace offerings, there's meal offerings, there's all kinds of offerings in the temple. And these offerings were to cover the sin until Jesus came in. And he set up an old system there. And in the old system, what it did was it, 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 it merely covered the sin and it took it out of sight until Jesus came on the cross to take the sin away. Oh, my God. It's one thing to have something wrong with you and you just put a Band-Aid on it. It's another thing to sign up for surgery and get that thing cut out. And get it taken away. You know, that, that, that's all. That's, see, when, when he set this thing up, it was a temporary covering. Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. I, I don't know if you've ever been to the dentist and had some temporary work done. Sometimes with that temporary stuff, don't let you eat like you want to eat. Oh, somebody don't want to hear that. Somebody said that's painful. So let's look, let's look at the old system, the old way. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 1, for the law... Having a shadow, as a matter of fact, let me, let, me, let me put it to you like this from the Living Bible. The old system of Jewish laws gave only a dim foretaste of the good things Christ would do for us. The old system, it was dim. The sacrifices under the old system were repeated again and again, year after year. But even so, they could never save those who live under their rules. But mind you, what God has proposed to do, salvation is good for past, present, and future. That's why he told Abraham, his belief was counted unto him for righteousness. If they could have one offering, one offering would have been enough. The worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and their feeling of guilt would be gone. But they had to keep on coming back. Because the old system could never do what the new system was going to do. You, you can't do something without Christ and do the same thing with Christ. Amen. There ought to be a distinction of your life before Christ and your life with Christ. And, and, and it says that, that, that if they could have done that just by bringing a heifer and, and sprinkling the blood on, on, on the altar, then they would only have to do that one time. But because of the insufficiency of the system, they had to do it over and over again. They, like, I kept on getting dirty. You've got to take a shower every day. But verse 3 of Hebrews 10, the Living Bible says, but just the opposite happened. Those yearly sacrifices reminded them of their disobedience and guilt instead of relieving their minds. And that's why God put it, he put it as a schoolmaster. He said, I'm going to set this system up to remind you that when you come to give a sacrifice, I receive you and your sacrifice, but you are not purely, you're not completely clean or perfect yet. You are ceremonial clean. You, you are temporary covered clean, but you're not the kind of clean that I want you to be. But because you believe me enough to come and do what I tell you to do, I'm going to count your faith as righteousness because this old system can't do what Jesus is going to do. But for right now, that's all the God. My God. My God. You ever, you ever, you know, just start working the job and you got your first paycheck and, and, and they want you to wear a uniform and, and all you got is the one you got from Foreman Mills. That's, that's, that's all you got right now until you get your second and third paycheck. And then, oh, Lord, never mind. Y'all see, I'm, I'm amongst a bunch of rich people and I remember when you had to wash out your gym suit at night. Because that's all you had was. But mom, I got gym three times a week. Well, 
And then we ain't had no washer and dryer. A washing machine, a washing bo- And then we, I took y'all back. And then we had this great big, we had no radiators. The heat would come to the floor, a great big wrought iron thing in the floor. All the heat, would, it would heat the whole house. But then you find your corner to put your gym trucks on so they can be dry. They can be dry in the morning. If we ain't had no fabric off, they were stiff. If you ain't risen about right, you wasn't about to, you were clean, but you were standing at a kitchen in the gym class. You got to the gym. <laughs> Temporary. Temporary. My first driver's license was a temporary driver's license. Until I could get to the real deal. And when I got the real deal, people started looking at me different. I, I didn't need nobody to ride with me like they do now. You need somebody to ride with you when you're temporary. But this kept reminding them of who they were. But not only did it remind see, God wasn't just trying to show us we were sinful. He was trying to show us we were hopeful. Because guess what? If it reminded me of why I was doing it, it reminded me of God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For it is not possible, look at verse 4, for the blood of bulls and goats really to take away sin. God said, I'm not playing a game with you. I'm not ready to send Jesus in the flesh. I do have a system set up to redeem you and reconcile you, but you've got to work with me. But he said, it's not possible for the blood of bulls and goats really to take away sin. So that's the old system, the old, that's the old system. And then God set up a new system. Look at Hebrews 10 and 5. The living Bible says, that is why Christ said as he came into the world, oh God, the blood of bulls and goats cannot satisfy you. So you have made ready this body of mine for me to lay as a sacrifice upon your altar. See, God can make change some stuff in our lives. And we're getting closer to it. He said, that can't pay the price. Because Jesus is our ransom. Our ransom sacrifice. A ransom is something that is paid to provide for the release of someone who is held captive. Sin was holding us captive. And what happened with the offerings in the old system, it put the key in the door, but it wouldn't turn it. I'm in jail, and the key's in the door, but it just won't turn. So when the new system comes, Jesus Christ says in verse 6, You will not satisfy, Father, with the animal sacrifices slain and burnt before you as offerings for sin, even though they did it in a spirit of obedience. And then Jesus says in verse 7, Then I said, See, I have come to do your will, to lay down my life just as the scriptures said I would. King James then said, I lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written to me to do thy will, O God. See, the law had a shadow of the things to come. How many know that when you shadow boxing, you ain't really boxing another person? <laughs> it's just your shadow. My God. Suppose you had a shadow bank account. I dare you to take something out of it. <laughs> amen. Everybody do that with amen. Amen. My God, a shadow account. But this new system, God sent this new system to Christ. He said, I come in the volume of the book is written to me. Look at verse 8. I'll go back to King James. Above when he said, when Jesus said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for the sin thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. He said, Daddy. That stuff getting old to you. You don't want that anymore. You don't, you don't really want that. And look at verse 9. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, the old, that he may establish the second, the new. He taketh away the first, that he might establish the second. And the second is better than the first. As a matter of fact, the second fulfilled the first, but it's greater than the first. 
And all he's trying to say is that Jesus as a high priest is after the order of Melchizedek. He said the other high priest had to go once a year. And Jesus had to do once and for all. Oh, I wish there was a... I wish I had to be able to go to school once and for all. I wish I could work a job once and for all and have all the money I needed to... I wish. Come on. Once and for all. What he's trying to say, this, this, he said, this new system, you don't, you don't have to bring animals in. and You don't have to bring the blood of goats and bulls and all that stuff. Said. As a matter of fact, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. A God is a way maker. He made a way for us to reconcile back to him. And Jesus paid it all and all to him we owe. Sin and left the Christian stand but he washed it white as snow. See, we don't understand salvation. Salvation is not only eternal life. Salvation takes away the penalty of sin, which is death, and the power of sin, which tries to control us. Everything we need is in our salvation. Oh, God is a way maker. We couldn't have done that for ourselves. There's no way we could have made a way for ourselves. Hallelujah. But he keeps on making a way. This new system came in, and Jesus said, I, I come to do your will to lay down my life, just as the scripture said that I would. And then verse 8 says, uh, above when he said, I believe verse 9, that he said, low, and verse 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's powerful. That is so powerful. See, I think like this great. Me and my wife no longer have to go down 9th Street and get some bulls and some goats and some heifers and bring them to church and slay them on the ox. Number one, I'll save some money. Number two, I'll save some time. And we don't have to keep on buying new clothes with that blood keep on splashing on us. If you want some blood on you, you better get the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Is that flow that makes me white as snow? It's, wow. We're sanctified to the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once more. Sanctified means we're clean, we're set apart. And when he says sanctified, it also means we're complete in Christ. And even though with our salvation, even though we may not act like it sometimes, we may not think like it sometimes, we may not walk like it sometimes, we are still saved. And we are still complete in Christ. Because what I don't do does not change who Christ is. See, when people tell me they don't believe Jesus, that doesn't change who Jesus is. That just means you don't believe him. And people get upset. Oh, how are they going to talk about my Jesus? They can talk about Jesus all they want. And Jesus is going to be Jesus. Don't get caught up in that. Jesus going to be Jesus, going to be Jesus. Amen. No matter what you call him, he's still Jesus. Don't take my Lord's name in vain. Take it in vain all you want. Go ahead. He's still God, and he's still Jesus, and there's still the Holy Ghost. What you just said about me and my faith does not change who my God is. As a matter of fact, while you're talking about him, I'm talking about you to him. He makes, he makes one system better than the other. Look at verse 11. And every priest stand at daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifice that can never take away sin. That's their job. Every day they got to keep coming in for the people, for themselves, for the people, for themselves, because that's all you got. Hallelujah. That's all you have right now. There is a promise. There, there is a promise of Christ. There, there is something coming down the pipe. Amen. You ever had somebody tell you that? I, I ain't got it for you this week, but next week when my ship come in, you know, it's a, 
people have promised you something, there's something coming down the pipe. And, 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 and there, there's a study called typology that shows that, that there is a type of Christ in the Old Testament that's always pointing to Christ, a foreshadow of things to come. And that's the good thing about it because when you read Hebrews 11, the roll call of faith, they had not had Jesus in the flesh, but they grabbed on to what they were told and they held on to their faith and they were looking for a building and a city who make a was not God. And they went through a whole lot of things that, 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 that we and I probably never go through and we got Jesus in the flesh. But we got to understand our salvation is more than escaping hell. Our salvation is a way of life. And if I mess it up and you mess it up, it's still salvation. If I mess it up and you mess it up, Jesus still paid it all. It is still what it is. That old system, and now Jesus is going to replace it with the new system. Look at verse 13. From henceforth, but this man after he offered, I'm sorry, verse 12. That this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. But this man, Christ Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, is contrast with verse 11 that says the priest got to go in there every day. And, it, and then verse 12 says, but this man only went once. Verse 11 says they had to go in every day. But verse 12 says, but this man had to go in once and offer one sacrifice for sins for everybody. And he sat down on the right hand of God. Why did he sit down? Because it was finished. It was done. Your salvation is done. It's a done deal. It's paid. He sat down. You don't sit down until you get it done. The father sent him to do something, and he came back and sat down. Daddy, I did it. You ever send your children to do something? They come, Mommy, it's done. And sometimes they think you're supposed to give them something. And you be like, <laughs> you ain't getting paid for everything. Now I ain't going broke taking care of you. <laughs> but he sat down. He sat down. At the right hand of God. So the old system replaced by the new system, which is Christ. The old way was a flesh priest. The new way was the highest priest. So the old, the new, and here's you. It says that verse 13, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. He went back, sat down at the right hand of the father waiting for all his enemies to become his footstool. Which means when they become his footstool, they become our footstool. Because if you accepted Christ, you are now into the same relation, the same covenant relationship with Christ that the Father sent him to set up here on earth. So, you know, in the process of being saved, there are going to be some stuff happening, but eventually they're going to be your footstool. As a matter of fact, if I were you, I'd probably put in my order a uh, how high I want my footstool to be, and if I want leather on it, or how a color I might, if I I want steel if I want wood because it is in fact going it's a done deal it is going to happen the old system will be replaced by the new system and here's you the believer look at verse uh, verse 14 for by one offering he hath perfected past present and future Jesus Christ going in one time as a sacrifice for you and I, past, present, and future. How powerful is that? Yeah. Has perfected forever. There it is. Has made us complete forever. Them that are sanctified complete in just one time. God is. A way maker. A ransom is something that is paid to provide for the release of someone who is held captive. Sin holds us in captivity. Some of us don't even know that we need to be saved. We don't even know that we're being held captive. We try to go other places and try to get folks to help us figure out why we behave like we behave. Sin has a grip 
where there's no blood of Jesus. But God is a way maker. Why would I say that? Because any time that you want to be released from the bondage, the burden of sin, God is a way maker. In other words, don't go find a heifer, a bull, or a goat. Find Jesus. He's the one that did it once and for all. And because he did that, you are still able to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is a way maker. Grandma used to say that he's a, he's a doctor in a sick room. And a lawyer in a courtroom. And we, you, sometimes as a little kid, you didn't know what they meant until you got sick. And you look for them in your sick room. Until you got in legal trouble. <laughs> and you look for them in the courtroom. Then they say he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. A bright and morning star. He is a great I am God. Don't you know you were brought with a price? Sometimes we get upset when we buy our children stuff or our grandchildren stuff and it costs us some good money and they don't take care of it. Well, don't you know you were brought with a price? Jesus gave his life. Don't you know that, that, that he who knew no sin became sin? Oh, he keeps on making a way out of no way. Oh, God is a way maker. He doesn't always make it the way I think he should, but he is sure enough a way maker. Your salvation is done deal. You know what you know? Nobody can steal your salvation. Did you know that? Can nobody reverse it? We can mess it up, but it's yours. There is nobody uh, here on earth that can take away your salvation. That's powerful. Now think about it. They can take away your car. They can take away your house. They can try to take away your dignity. But they can't take away your salvation. My God, that is, see, that, that is so powerful when you think about it. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I, I made sure that they couldn't take it away. Turn with me to John chapter 10 as we close out. He said, I made sure that they would never be able to take away your salvation. You know, people, they threaten you sometimes. If you miss one payment, I'm going to come take it. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, I'm with that rich group again. Ain't nobody ever threatened you to turn your stuff off? Oh, I'm with the wrong crowd today. Okay. All right. Y'all always had it like that, right? Okay. I ain't talking about you wasted your money. I'm talking about sometimes it's tight and I know I'm right. Come on. Come on. But he said, look here. I'm going to make sure they never get a chance. You know what? If they ain't pay for it, how they going to take what they ain't pay for? It didn't cost them one red cent. But it cost my Jesus his red blood. Look at John 10. Look at verse 24. And before I read that, the Jews kept on coming to him saying, Jesus, please tell us who you are. You know what's strange about that? Every time they told him who he was, they didn't believe it. And because they didn't believe it, they came back another time and said, won't you stop playing? You know what I mean, Calvin? Won't you stop playing? Tell me. Come on. Look at verse 24. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them again and said, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. What he's always trying to say is, 
that there's some folk you might find in church that are standing out talking about, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. I love verse 28. And they get upset. And I give unto them eternal life. Because in the Hebrews 10, I'm the highest priest. We don't have a priest after the other priest. We've got a high priest. He said, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never what? Perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of. I don't care what you believe about me, saying Jesus. I come to do my Father's will. And my Father's will that I might reconcile mankind back to me. And they are saved. And you can't take them out of my hand. I don't care if you send the temple police. I don't care if you send the Roman centurion guard. There's some stuff that I've done that you can't undo. This salvation is a done deal, baby. Because God is a way maker. Oh, my God. Look at verse 25. My father, which gave, 20, 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all. In other words, you can ask me all the questions you want. But my father who sent me is greater than all. He didn't say all them. Oh. See, that's, that's how you got to pray. When the enemy keeps messing with you and your family, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because sometimes the enemy is trying to push up against your faith. So they, let me see how faithful. They, they was in church Sunday running all around, clapping and shouting. When they were singing, when pastor was preaching, they was all over the place. Let me just press in on their faith. That's why you can't just be powerful in church. My father which gave to me is greater than all, and no man is what? And no man is able to do what? Pluck them out of my f- You can't pluck them out of my f- And you can't pluck them out of daddy's head. So if you don't believe who I am, then my father got them in his hand, because I in the father we are. So if you keep on messing with me, you can't mess with him. Come my my father, see, this is Jesus on earth in the flesh. So, you know, he's trying to, my father is greater than them all. There is security in your salvation. Your salvation is not up for sale. It's a done deal. Can't nobody pluck you out of God's hands. Oh, my God. You know, I'm not trying to devalue salvation. Anybody ever see that commercial on TV? It's for um, automatic dishwasher, for Cascade, with the little girl. She says, my mother washes the dishes before she puts them in the dishwasher. So she says, what does the dishwasher do? I come to let you know, I don't have to go to the temple and sacrifice no heifer or no sheep or no goat. What does salvation do? It provides for me everything. That other commercial said, get cascade. It'll do the whole job. The blood of Jesus will do the whole job. Jesus plus what? Jesus plus nothing. She said, what does the dishwasher do? <laughs> Somebody might come to you and what does your salvation do? It does everything I need it to do. And you can't pluck me out of his hand. If you try to do that, my father's got him in his hand. If you can't get him out of my hand, what do you think will get out of my father's hand? And my father is the one that sent me. Oh, glory be to God. That sounds like double security. You have a double lock on your door. You ever put a double, you ever go to a hotel and they put the dead, they put the night bolt on and the dead bolt on. And then if you ever been broken into, you put a chair up on the door and then you go get the bathtub and put that up on the door. Oh, Lord Jesus. God, you, you want, oh, you want to be safe in his arms. And, I watch a lot of those court shows, and uh, they uh, 
always say in order to prove your case, you uh, got to have it in writing. Especially Marilyn Mignon, she's she tough. Or the people's court. I don't think they call it the people's court. I think they just call it court because it ain't for the people. So um, <laughs> no matter what they say, they got to prove it. Do you have something in writing? I cannot go by hearsay. It must be in writing. If you don't have anything in writing, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to just, you know, rule in the other person's favor because you don't have any proof. And sometimes the enemy will come and mess with you and mess with me and try to tell us that we don't have any proof that we're saved. That's why you got to know what you know, that you know, that you know. I don't care. You could be crying your eyes out because of what God let happen in your life, but he's still God and he's still able and you're still saved and your salvation is still what God said it is going to be. I'm going to finish with the turn to John 19, 29 and 30. This is for Marilyn Mignon. I'm in her court. And she said, how can you prove that you're saved? Look at John 19, 29 and 30. John 19, 29 and 30. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. And they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon his side and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Mal and Mignon, it is finished. My debt is paid. I am a free man. You are a free woman. Sin no longer has dominion over you. Excuse me, Judge, if you give me one more minute, he was bruised for my transgressions, and the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I am healed. Excuse me, Judge, can't nobody do me like Jesus. You can rule against me, but you can't pluck me out of my Savior's hand, and you can't pluck me out of my Father's hand. Excuse me, Judge. Jesus is sweeter. He's better to me than I ever been to myself. Excuse me, Judge. There is no way I can live without Him. He keeps on making a way out of no way. Excuse me, Judge. You didn't hear me on the third day. He got up with all power. My new life, my eternal life in His hands. Oh, death. Where's that sting? Oh, grave, where is that victory? God is a way maker. Let us all stand.